Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be going through the OpenAI Assistant API, specifically leveraging streaming, which was released in the Vercel AI package. We're going to go through a Home Assistant example, and then we're going to dive into some of the more specific specifics around streaming. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to be looking at the uh, releases. And so you can kind of see here through the Vercel releases of the AI package, we're looking at like Canary, but then the also the uh, patches. So this is last week. I know I've been uh, away for a little bit. Again, I've been working through a lot of different AI agents and a lot more audio. Um, and so I found this really interesting that uh, it was coming out with the, the ability for open AI assistance to be streamed. This is super important when you start dealing with a lot of different tooling and being able to write, reach out to external APIs. The other pieces that have come out are also the fact that um, the they specify a forward stream type now and the ability to uh, use the use agent hook for set messages. They're exposing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the um, the first part, which is which is the uh, streaming portion. We're actually going to look at each one of these patches and then just kind of go through the code, and then we'll actually build out the example that they have. So if we go ahead and we look at the streaming patch, there's a, a few different things. A lot of it's up here is their documentation, but if you click on the route underneath the examples and then the app API assistant, you'll see a couple of different things. So we're still using the same experimental assistant response, but what's happening now is instead of the message context, we're actually pulling in this forward stream. So our data is kind of staying the same, but instead of our run, we're actually running a stream and it's in here in this thread of the runs, you can actually see this create and stream. So it's really just one function change, but then down below is where all of the uh, actions are starting to happen as well as the ability to call out to different tools. So not only are we getting the stream coming through, but we're actually being able to while uh, uh, the queue, like our status is here, we're actually able to then look and execute on our different functions. So in here we have like the get room temperature. So this is incredibly important. And like I said, we're actually gonna run through the code of the example, but I just wanted to show that this is the implementation that they started or that they just put in the patch. The next piece, what for the patch was the uh, the response. And so now what you have is instead of just a void or an any, you actually have the uh, response type for forward stream as a run. So it actually knows the particular type. Next, there's the, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go into the example and then we'll start going through the instructions of setting this up. So the first thing to pay attention to is we're in the AI uh, package of Vercel. We're gonna clone this down and we're gonna go into setting up the example for the assistant route. And so what they're doing in this one is they're creating a uh, home automation assistant and what it's gonna be doing. So we have our prompt and we have our temperature and then we're going to be able to set our room temperature. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and jump into OpenAI and get this set up. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. We also have a survey down below where it's actually going to be an upcoming course on building privatized, white-labeled business assistants or AI agents. All right, let's get back to it. So now we're in our platform OpenAI and we just went to our assistance tab. Remember you have to have a plus account for this. We're just gonna go ahead and click create. And what we'll do is we'll just call this uh, stream example. 
Uh, we can go back over to here, and what we're going to do is we're going to grab the uh, the uh, prompt for the instruction. We're going to go here and paste that in. And then we're going to grab our functions. So if you haven't done a function before, really it's just a, uh, a JavaScript or a JSON blob, but you come down here, you click add function, you go ahead and paste that in and we'll click save. What it's doing is it's basically telling you that these rooms are an enum of the property that uh, you're able to grab. So, and that you have to post that information. And then in order to set the room, it's going to do the same thing. It's requiring uh, the room as an enum, but then it also has the temperature that you want to set that room to. That's where you have required room and temperature. So we're going to go back to the assistant and add another function. And we'll go ahead and save. And you don't have to do this, but we're just going to put it up to GPT-4 for now, just in case. Um, you can test it if you want, but really you need your assistant ID in order to set this up in Vercel. So we'll go ahead and copy that. Okay, so what, what we're gonna do, first you need to clone this repo. So you need to clone the AI Vercel repo. And then once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and put in the, uh, you can either use PNPM, PNPM, yep, or NPM. Uh, and then you're going to want to go, but you're going to want to go in this folder and then we can launch this. So what I did is I, I pulled this up. So I've cloned this down into VS code and I'm just kind of looking at the AI folder in the examples folder and then next open AI folder. And this has all the different examples that we're going to look at. Once I've CD into that, I just ran the, uh, the run command for PNP, PNPM or NPM. The other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put in your open AI key as well as your assistant ID. Remember, this is what we copied into our clipboard from the open AI platform. Next, uh, so now that we have that and we have this running, we're actually just going to go to the page and actually see what's happening. And if we come over here, just remember that it's localhost and then the assistant URI. So now that we are in this, we're going to take a look at, we'll go ahead and clear these. We're going to take a look at our network. Hopefully you can see this. Um, I'll try and make it a little bigger. Uh, and then we'll see what we can do. So we're just going to type in here 76 degrees. And we'll see what we get. And so we can see that our feed is going out. And we're actually getting an error. And that's perfect because remember, in order to set the temperature, uh, we want to, we have to pass it the room. So it's telling us we need to say which room we're referring to. And is this in Celsius? So let's uh, do this again. And we'll just say, what is the temperature or in the bedroom and I know there's a spelling error but I just want to see what's coming back so first we tried to set a degree and now it's saying it's 76 in the bedroom so now if we want to actually change it what we can do again this isn't connected to a, a database or a API so but it is remembering context in our thread. So the way the assistants work is you have um, your your assistant and then your thread and then your runs and your messages. So what we're going to do is we'll just try and set this in the living room and we'll just say we want it to be uh, 65 F because I'm in the States degrees in the living room. And now we should actually get a object coming back. And so there we go. We actually get our object. This is actually coming from the, uh, the tool itself. So we're actually setting it, but we're seeing that our data is the temperature in the living room is 
I believe that's in Celsius now, which is pretty awesome that it's converting. And uh, it gives us the description as well as the new temperature and the old temperature. And again, that is because in our object here, we're setting these principles or properties, right? So we have our number and then it's making an association between the new temperature and the old temperature. So let's take a look at the page. So if we go back to VS Code and we look at our page, we're doing a couple of different interesting things. We've got our experimental use assistant. Remember, this was also kind of added, and it's referencing use assistant. So if we want to see what that does, we hover over and it's saying we're defining our API. We're checking we can look or predefine our thread ID, and then we can also pass credentials, headers, and body and then the way to do an on error. So what's really interesting about this is if it fails, say you get a 429 or something like that, or some other error, you could actually capture that and have your front end respond with an appropriate response. So not only are we able to like debug, debug this, but we're able to graceful uh, do a graceful fail. So use this use assistant is super helpful. What we're and here we're just assigning our API to assistant. And we can look, this is the code we were looking at earlier of our route, where it's defining our temperature, it's posting this information, it is getting the thread ID, and then or or creating one, and then it's creating the message, and then we're actually running this through a stream. Here's our run result, our run result of our stream, and then we're passing this information. So right here, when we get to the tools, and I probably should have blown this up a little bit more, actually, sorry. So when we get to our tools, what we're doing is we're able to map this information and then check based on the function and the function name, which function should we actually call in our OpenAI Assistant function. This function could technically be a call to another API. It could be a call to a database. It could be any number of things. And here, we're just defining it as this is our home temperature array and what are the parameters that we want assigned to it. And then we're actually sending that information back. And this is the, the object that we saw getting printed. And we're saying it's a role of data. And why is this important? Well, if we go back to our page, the assistant page, we can actually see down here that uh, a few different things. So again, if we have an error, we have our error here, but then we also have our map. So this is all the messages that we're getting. And if you notice, it's saying based on the role, what are we doing? If the role is not data, then just show the streamed content. If the role is data, then what we're going to do is a pre element and actually put the JSON stringified result in here. So when we're actually returning the data back from the function, that is actually getting inserted into our uh, display in our message and we're showing it a different way. Remember though that every single one of these are in our messages of our thread. So it's just showcasing that this is a data role and that's how we're getting our, our uh, styling around it. So if we look back here, that's how we can tell that this object needs to go inside of, well, this object needs to go inside of this uh, pre-element. And so again, this is super, super helpful now that we're doing streaming specifically on assistance but the ability to actually look at this and see a function in the act in action with the, uh, the stream response, which we can see here. All right, everyone, that's it for today. What we covered was the OpenAI Assistance API, specifically looking at Vercel AI package that allows us to do streaming. This is incredibly beneficial when looking at things for custom functionality or being able to reach out to external APIs. Again, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe, and don't forget the link below for the survey for our upcoming course. Happy nerding.